stuff. And uh, I actually retired from that job to start doing this nonsense full time right before COVID hit. So it was perfect timing for me because like I got like I sell viral videos and shit like that. Like so people can put them up on peoplearawesome.com and I got interest from the MTV people now like to try to get on the ridiculousness show and things like that. And like, this is one of those things, like I was an athlete when I was younger, I've been a professional musician my whole life. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, axes and knives and all kinds of sharp objects is just the, that's the ticket. That's weird. <laughs> it is weird, but isn't that, uh, that's called the life's journey, right? That's, that's what happens when you're on a journey in life. You don't really oh, yeah. know your destination. In fact, um, the destination is a big question mark. You kind of point yourself in a certain direction but the wind is taking you where it wants to take you. And, and yeah, you're, yeah. you're thinking, hey, man, I'm going to be grinding my axe guitar up on stage. And instead, you're actually grinding axes yep. and throwing them at wood, doing one hand, one handed uh, handstands and throwing axes right on target. Uh, OK, uh, yeah, like, yeah, I've actually been taking that, that whole concept of the inversion way farther now like i don't know if you've seen but i started with the normal ones now i've been doing trick shots mixed with that so i've gotten up to 24 feet away from the target with a handstand shot and then i've been doing like multiple axes in one hand while bow you know doing a one-handed hand stand and all kinds of nonsense i'm actually in a uh, high stakes i'm traveling out there for uh, a whole bunch of tournaments and then turns out there's a trick shot competition and like everyone's like you gotta go I'm like well i'm already gonna be there so sure <laughs> so i got <laughs> yeah. a couple in my back pocket that i'm saving even for that the, and then you know so sometime uh about a week from now well no probably about two weeks from now i'm gonna be dropping some videos on the youtube channel that are just absurd so oh, yeah but I got to keep the competition guessing for a little bit, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like anything else. You got to, you, like you said, you got to keep that ace up your sleeve. For, oh, yeah. uh, we're recording already, so let me just give you a quick intro, bro, because. Cool, let's just uh, go, yeah. Yeah, we're just jumped right in here. So everybody, we're talking with Walden Cox, a.k.a. Walthrax, which I do believe, since you're into like metal and stuff, that has something to do with Anthrax, the band. Um you he can, does. <laughs> yeah, I figured that. Anthrax is awesome. Um, so, yeah, and, and Walden is a well, awesome axe thrower. Um, if you're watching on video right now and you look behind him, you see all the things he throws his axe at. I don't think he throws any axes at his dog over there. His dog is, is probably not a target, so that's that's one thing, but... Yeah, he does one hand, one handed. No, hand no, no, no. That's it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we might have a little bit of this going on throughout the interview, if that's all right. I got two different dogs that like to play, and uh, I'm outside. So, <laughs> all right, man, cool. I, we're we're in the same boat. I have this cat walking around here that wants to jump on my face and kill me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so one of the things. Right uh, on. One of the things was I, I saw your Instagram and I was like, damn, I was like, this guy is awesome. And then I started thinking like, yeah, like act, throwing axe is like a rotational movement. It's, it's uh, hand-eye coordination. Um, I don't think you use a mace, but how interesting is this to just talk about the movement patterns and everything like that? So let's get into that, man. But uh, also right before we oh, start. Absolutely. And actually, ironically, I do actually use a mace a little bit. Oh, okay. But you actually warm up with those. Um, and that's only recently. Um, and when I started doing bigger things like the tricks with the five-pound head axes, that's when I realized that I'm basically using a steel mace. So I started uh, – I mean, it's got edges on it, but whatever. But I started following some people um, like, uh, like you know, Jake Shannon. Uh, I started following some people like uh, – another one that I can think of – off the top of my head is Franken legs. I don't even know who that guy is in real life, but I started watching these people do flows with uh, seal maces, and I just got completely hey, get out of the way, Chibi. <laughs> I, I started uh, getting really enamored with it, with the whole concept of it. And then turns out uh, my wife and Jake Shannon's wives were already really good friends. So next thing you know, Jake and I are hanging out, and uh, 
took almost a year, ironically, for us to like really start talking about what we both do. And we were just, you know, we're just buddies. Like, and it turns out, oh, hey, he does steel mace. Oh, hey, I do axes. Oh, hey, wait, those are kind of the same ish. And then, you know, ended up hanging out with him. He brought his children over, you know, like his, his young boys. Like, I believe they're like eight and 10 or nine and 11 or something like that. And we started teaching them to throw and they got real, real into it. So the next thing you know, he and I are talking about the similarities of the actual movements. And uh, so uh, ironically, I mean, I'm not super into it yet, but like I do a lot of the shoulder rolls and stuff like that to warm up, especially when I'm getting ready for a bit because one thing is I'm done right hand, right? So therefore, if I'm throwing all day long, every day with my right hand, I'm gonna end up looking like that guy from, uh, uh, what's that movie? Lady in the Water by M. Night Shyamalan, who's all stacked on one side. So right. for me, it was a reason to start coordinating my left hand and start like balancing my body. And then I've just found it's fun. And I mean, I'm not very good at it, so I don't post any videos, of course. But hey, you know, my specialty and my whole thing is axes. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. And and yeah, you got, yeah man, that's... like I really the the axes oh, oh, go ahead, you, go ahead. you're good <laughs> yeah the axes yeah there's always like a little delay that's the problem with with doing uh zoom calls but um the axe is your your specialty but it, how interesting is it to hear because uh every anybody knows me by now if they've been following the podcast i'm like on a mission to prove prove to the rest of the world who's a bunch of naysayers that the steel mace is an awesome training tool for almost anything that you want to do in life and you just nailed a very particular point balancing out your body i had on uh i don't know if it was last year uh neil kenner who is a tennis coach and he used the steel mace steel mace with his um with his athletes because uh think of what a tennis player does they're rotational but they're using that one arm all the time so you have to counterbalance something so that you don't have this like overdeveloped side and then you get repetitive stress injuries and stuff like that but now my question to you walden is um when you started using the mace did you notice uh that you were throwing an axe any better please say yes i'm not gonna say yes directly but what I am going to say is I noticed that I wouldn't say better. I, what I would say is more consistently. I found that by doing the steel mace and really learning to control those motions, both with both sides, um, I'm going to drop a little thing for my wife here. She always calls the your non-dominant side. So my left hand, the dork side. So she was trying to get me to develop my dork side. So, you know, whatnot. So she's the one who really got me doing handstands and all all that other stuff too. I did notice from doing the smace and became, I would say, moral feeling. Like I, all of a sudden, like I don't like I'm doing things where I'm not looking. Like the proprioception of it all became better, right? But this is the big part: is the uh, the left hand. My left hand has progressed so fast that I have actually done complete. Like, complete not league nights with axe throwing where I decided to use my entire my left hand all night and I won my matches which is that's not like I used to not even be able to hit the, the wall and get it to stick let alone hit a bullseye and it still feels awkward to throw with my non-dominant hand but I would attribute the steel mace to the fact that it's helping my body learn the uh, opposite side better and faster Okay, so then then it's a win for the steel mace here. I mean, it's a big absolutely, win. it's a win. And this is going to help your your axe game because now you're becoming a thrower on your left side. And when you you know show off your talents and things like that in years to come, yeah, you're going to be wowing the audience. Like, oh, hey, you think I could uh, do that with my left hand? And everyone's like, no, nah, you'll never do it. And then boom, you'll nail it because you started this uh, this mace training. So. <sighs> There's a score. There's a check right. in the box for the mace, everybody. Um, Absolutely. I love it. I love it. And and also, um, I think because you listen to metal, that's also the reason why you're so good at throwing axes. Am I, am I correct? <laughs> I listen to it. I play it. I used that job in the early 2000s. I was a full-time touring me a metal musician. And, um, like, I still do tons of metal. But I think that a good part of it, the reason why I even started throwing axes and got so into it is 
honestly, it just seemed like such a metal thing to do, right? Right. Like, it's like this the berserker form of darts. And so, yeah, part of it was the <laughs> fact that I'm a, you know, I'm Swedish originally, or, you know, genealogically. And so I got all that. So for me, it was originally, it was kind of like, I kind of wanted to dive into something historical that's relevant to me. I also wanted to just get some energy out, right? And then about 10 years back, I got divorced and uh, I needed some way to let my can I cuss <laughs> or no? Would yeah, a little it? bit, a little bit. One day, I, I okay. I, I hope children listen to this show. So <laughs> okay, I will, okay. Let's. Uh, I'll just start that sentence over. But so anyway, I got divorced about ten years back, and that really motivated me to find an outlet for my aggression and my depression, and just all of the things that come with something devastating happening in your life, right? And so I decided. Hey, I used to throw axes at trees when I was younger. I used to throw knives. That was fun. But you know what? I'm going to go on Amazon right now and find me a good throwing axe. I don't know, 10 hours. I'd thrown them so much with my roommate. Like, we'd light a bonfire in my yard and just throw axes all night until we broke them, right? And that's when we realized that, you know, okay, the cheap stuff's cheap for a reason. And we went through probably a dozen things, just literally throwing them till they broke in half or shattered into pieces. And we didn't figure out anything about rotation, didn't figure out anything about stance, nothing like that, because that wasn't it. The whole thing at that point was this stuff had other stuff. Sorry, I didn't self-censor there. But, uh, oh my God. So it was really an aggression thing. All right, and just to let it all out and to, to focus that negative energy into a positive source or at least a source that wasn't going to cause me any more problems in my life. And so I started getting pretty good at it. And then I just kept doing it and just kept doing it. And I would say it kind of intrinsically happened where I started figuring out the rotation, a grip and a step, and then the way you move your form in order to adjust for your distance, right? Because if you throw from a certain spot all the time you get good at it but if you back yourself up six inches you're going to bounce it off the target so it's all about figuring that stuff out and then you know fast forward nine years and then i meet a couple people when i went to one of those facilities called bad axe met a couple people and uh they asked me if i'd ever thought about doing this professionally to which i just laughed after just like no like that that's not like what you're crazy they're like, well, would you like to? And I was like, I would love to, but I have a job and it pays well and all that. And they're like, cool, well, you can write your own schedule. You should just work for us because you're, you're a fun anomaly. You do stuff that we haven't seen and you're kind of good at this for not knowing it's a real world. And I'm like, okay, cool, great. So I started doing it and maybe I worked once a month for the first few months. Started an Instagram profile and just, just for fun, you know, and because uh, I'd done it with music and it didn't really do much for me for music, but it was fun. It was a way to kind of keep track of some other friends and stuff. And then um, started learning trick shots. And then, because people would show me stuff like an underhanded throw. I'm like, oh, I've never tried that. So I tried an underhand throw. And that was pretty easy. Then someone showed me something else. And I realized there's not a lot going on here in the trick shot world. What if I tried this? And the next thing you know, I start putting trick shot videos up. And then so my follower count goes from the tens to the hundreds. And I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. And then, you know, then, well, then we started doing that for about a few months. And then COVID. COVID, when COVID hit, I had already retired my, my day job, right? Which is crazy. And that's a different story. But so I'd worked full, I decided to work full time at the axe throwing place, which for me was three days a week all day, right? And so during that time, because things were slowing down, I ended up deciding, oh, I'm going to take these trick shots. What can I do? And then maybe you've seen this video where I decided to take, because some people will throw a hat and then catch it with the axe, right? So I took a full on gas mask with the chamber and everything on it and threw that from about 20 feet out and caught it like a hat rack with the, uh, with the ax. Didn't damage anything at all, right? Just caught it, landed right on top, and it was awesome. That was the very first one that I did that started to go viral because of the timing and all that, and it was kind of an idea. I was like, if I nail this, it'll be a viral video. That's hilarious because of right now, right? And um, so it went kind of viral, and then it you know, died off, and then it's, had, it's had a couple ups and downs. And then I realized, wow, people really pay attention to this. Like more people liked that than follow me. So at the time I had like maybe 200 followers and I had like seven, 800 views. And I was like, whoa. And like, you know, at least 300 likes. I was like, this is 
crazy. This is a, this is the thing you can do. So I just started taking it crazier. And then, then eventually I'm, I'm in my yard for six months with this behemoth. And so I just started deciding, okay, I used to skateboard. I used to ride BMXs. Like what? I'm going to just think about it like that. How can I find tricks? How, what can I do? What I have, what haven't I seen other people do? How can I be the first one to do something? Right. And like, you know, I'm, I, I this hopefully sounds as good as I want it to sound, but I don't consider myself the best axe thrower. I just consider myself one of the, one of the, I don't know, front runners of new stuff, right? Like, like I, uh, I've been referred to as the Tony Hawk of axe throwing, not because Tony Hawk wins all of everything, but because he's usually the old, older guy who still does a trick before anyone else, right? Yeah. So because I'm in my mid forties and most of the axe throwers are twenties and thirties and I'm doing handstand shots and no one else is doing those. I got kind of this weird reputation and a few people have actually referred to me as that. And as a matter of fact, the first time that I did those, uh, handstand shots, that one video that's at nearly 15,000 views now, like Tony Hawk himself liked and commented on that video. And I'm like, Oh my God, like that's insane. Yeah. <laughs> like right. now I, go on, I really want to get that guy's attention. I want to teach him to throw some axes. That would be super fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If he came out and hung out with you and, and, uh, maybe he even incorporates a little bit of skateboard in with it. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'll go out to him, man. I got other reasons to go to California. Like I got a, a pseudo, Oh, well, it's a business partner. I mean, we can't really talk about it so far yet because we got some crazy ideas in the works. But I got a buddy out in Costa Mesa, a fellow axe thrower, who he and I have some ideas going on. And Costa Mesa is right in Tony Hawk's woods. He decides to hit me up and say, yeah, let's throw some axes and let's have some fun. I'll go to him, whatever. Like, I, I'm willing to travel. I used to be a touring musician. Touring for axe throwing seems way more fun. <laughs> yeah now real briefly what uh what was the name of your band do you want to talk about your your musicians oh i have so i have so many bands i've been in like i'm not joking you uh it, it's probably close to 100 bands i've played in including ones that i've started and were just m like my own solo projects but if you'd like it makes it a lot easier for me to just i can give you one or two so people can check it out if they like yeah. But if you want, I can send you a few different links. Maybe you can just put in the show description or something. Okay. But like um, one, the, ma the main band I toured with many, many moons ago was called Catheter. And yes, it's Catheter like everyone thinks it is. But it was a, what we call Grindcore, which is basically punk rock with a death metal aesthetic. So as fast as possible and just simple but brutal riffs, right? And we toured literally all over the world for three years. I went to 57 different countries, made dozens of lifelong friends. I mean, it was amazing. But from that, I started branching out and realizing that every other kind of music's cool too. Because when you go to Europe, a death metal show, unless it's a giant festival, has, you know, a rock band and like maybe a reggae band and maybe an acoustic guitar player and all on the same bill. And everyone likes all, all of it. Oh, hold on. Yeah. Let's let our sirens go by real fast. There's a lot of fire in Colorado right now. And ironically, the skies are bluer than usual today. But, um, so anyway, um, so I, I really started finding like, like a, um, a passion for music and sound itself. Right. And so I just started diving in, like someone would be like, Hey, you want to play bass for this band? Sure. I like that one song. So, you know, whatever. I started just touring a whole bunch and then I started writing stuff and I got like, I, I don't know, that's an absurd amount of songs I've written and I've gotten to score a few movies, like, you know, independent films and stuff. So that's kind of my my other main job at this point is like I make music for other people for stuff. I haven't toured in years and I haven't even played a live show in probably two years at this point, but it's, it's more about the creation process, you know? So it's just make some music like a painting, make it done, put it out there. People can like it if they want. And if not, I'm already working on the next thing. And then, so then the ax throwing came along and uh, it's just completely, it's just insane me what's happened because if you ever click on one of my videos and it's got sound you'll hear music in it and that is me oh so, really like, there's probably at least a hundred videos with sound in them and it's all me so oh great great that's cool all but right anyone gonna... out there wants some music hit me up no <laughs> i might i might need a new theme song for my, for my show so um oh dude i got you like the, i got you it'll just be a uh i'll just do you for free man absolutely you uh, Awesome. And if you man. like it, you can have it. And if not, whatever. You know. Yeah, cool. and and I always like remind people when when, yeah, when the yeah, show send starts. Send me a couple uh, a couple of things you'd like, right? Yeah, just let me know what you uh, like like some sort of reference of 
of what you would like it to sound like in general, and then uh, I'll I'll make you if you what, need like thirty seconds or something like that. Yeah, yeah, that'd be awesome. Okay, so yeah, I'll just send you a couple different ideas of like thirty second pieces and stuff like that. And if you like something, you can have it. And if you like something, and be like, hey, what about this? I can change it up. I don't care. I'm an artist, man. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, great, <laughs> man. I appreciate that. That's awesome. So, yeah, I'm all about the music, man. I love doing themes. Yeah, absolutely, it, my friend. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So, what you got for me next? <laughs> well, uh, yeah. So, you know, let's get back to the axe throwing. I was looking through your Instagram, and I see I can't yeah. remember. I can't remember his name, uh, but he's your adversary. He's your nemesis. Um, Backyard Axe is yeah. that who? Was? Oh, oh, Backyard Viking. Oh, no, okay. So Dalton, the Axe guy, is the other guy. Who and it's ironic. Some people do think we have a, uh, a rivalry, but do whatever. We've never met each other face to face. And when we do interact online, we're buddies. Yeah. In fact, I'm going to meet him and we'll be in the trick shot competition together in Tulsa coming up next weekend, uh, which is, uh, I guess it's not live. So it'd be October uh, 11th and 12th that with w- that weekend. Um, it's going to be virtual. So that'll be fun. But then the backyard Viking. Yeah, no, it's going to be live face to face. Like, like oh, okay. yeah, we'll, we'll record it so people can see it. This is an actual tournament with money on the line and stuff like that. So how much uh, money, so, how much money is on the line? The, okay. So it's, this is called the angry wood open. Right, and there's there's multiple events, right? There's a trick shot competition, and that's just for fun. There's no money in that one unless people are donating, right? But then there's the standard hatchet, which is the big event. There's big axe, which is my favorite because that's the one like a steel mace, and I'm good at it, like really good at it. Uh, well, I wouldn't say really good at it. I compared to the way I throw hatchets, I'm really good at big axe. Um, like it's it's that weight being way at the end, man. It's so much easier to control for some reason. But uh, and then there's also something called duels where two different people throw at the same target together, right? It's a team thing. And so my duels partner doesn't even live in the same state as me, so we never get to practice, which is super fun. His name's Gail, goes by Gail's on Instagram, makes beautiful at custom axes. But uh, so I'm gonna I'm competing in all four because I'll be doing trick shots Friday night, hatchet Saturday, and Sunday I'll be big axe and doubles and uh, or duels or whatever they call it. And so the overall prize pool is $25,000. So, so it's like 15000 of the hatchet. Like, seriously, you win the dart game of throwing hatchets, it's like 10 or 15 grand, like a straight up check. And then the big axe is probably somewhere four grand do you, because like the big events hatchet, that's the one you can see on ESPN too, right? You know, that's the world. Um, hopefully, well, keeping my fingers crossed, I think I just qualified for a world t- world championship bid in Big Axe coming up in Atlanta in December. So if that's the case, right on. <laughs> so but yeah. yeah, it's gonna be nuts, man. This is gonna be a crazy tournament. But if you so, I, but going back to the original question, the one who plays my rival on TV is Backyard Viking. <laughs> I think that's who okay. you're talking about. Yes, yes. And um, so his his name in real life is Scott Line. He is one of my dearest friends in real life that I've ever had. Right. Like, it's kind of funny because like usually uh, because of the stigma, I'm usually the one in the old WWF or WWE standards. I'd be the shill, I guess. I'm the bad guy because, you know, whatever. But uh, yeah, Scott and I are like, he's the one in California, Costa Mesa. that We got some stuff in the works together. We're trying to take, we're trying to take just like Jake and you, like we're trying to take, uh, you guys have really ex- expanded and like help helped blow up the steel mace thing into into you know worlds that didn't know it existed. Like me, I didn't know it existed until it crossed over with my world. So I think that's amazing. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to expand axe throwing, like you guys have extended extended uh or expanded um the whole concept of steel mace. Like you know, it's darts with axes is fine, but to a certain extent, these guys become robots and they become almost unbeatable. So that's why when I say I'm better at big axe than hatchet, I'm good at hatchet, but I'm way more consistent than a lot of the other guys are with big axe. Not saying that I'm some sort of robot that'll hit bullseyes every time, but I can compete. Like I actually have a chance to win when it comes to big axe. And unless I, unless I get real lucky in my seating all the way through and hatchet, I'm probably not gonna place on the money because a lot of these guys have been doing nothing but throw at the same target for years, right? As you can see behind me, I don't even have the same target. If you paid attention to my to my uh, Instagram, 
this wall morphs over time. It gets bigger, it changes. I destroy one log, put a new one up. I mean, everything that I do is the opposite of what the league actually is, right? Because the league is like, this is your foul line. So everyone steps right up to that foul line to get as close as possible. And it's the targets, the same size, the same bins, and the same everything. It's the same all the time. And so break that up. It's like the jazz music of axe throwing. I'm like, whatever, dude. Like, I'm going to throw from right here now. You know, and like, so I have my specialties, but my specialties don't lend to the sport, uh, the competition that I actually choose to take part of. But, you know, I sit around and I practice and I get better and all that kind of stuff. Just like anyone, any sport. You want to, in basketball, you want to spend time shooting hundreds, thousands of free throws every day, no matter how boring they are, because you need to have that skill when it pops up. And so, you know, I just kind of try to, I don't know, like, I don't know what I'm exactly trying to say, other than like, you know, I love what I do and I'm trying to keep it being my full-time career, like my forever career. It's just weird to be in, in, in an industry where making that happen is something you have to blaze your own trail to do. Unless I can win every single competition in an entire year, I need a job, right? So right. it's like, I mean, there's some of these guys who seriously make, will win 30, 40 grand in a year in tournaments. It's nuts. They're so good at this. And, you know, and that's awesome. Like guys like Mike Kump and Vic Crescenzo and like those guys are in Shane Shaft. God, I can just name these dudes off. They're, they're people who have no business even trying to throw against in a tournament because they're going to beat me. But they're so, they're all such nice guys, and they're all they're all like the thing about the axe throwing, at least the world axe throwing league community, is um if you're if you're an unlikable person, you get kind of outcast. Like people are just like, I don't want to hang out with that guy. I've seen it happen only once, but it was like at a giant tournament. There was one dude who just kind of was a self proclaimed a hole, and um, he got himself literally ostracized. Like everyone just kind of kicked him out. And I was like, oh, wow. So even if some of these dudes are quiet during competition, if, when we're having the beers afterwards, these people are all fantastic. It's an amazing community. And I imagine the Steel Mace community and just the flow community in general is the same. I was going to just say the same thing. As you're speaking, I'm going, man, this sounds just like Steel Mace people. If, if you come across the person and they swing a mace, it. you're like, yo, you swing a mace? Whoa. And it's like you, you – right away you click with each other because it's like you both know the secret you know whatever the yeah, secret exactly. is exactly you, you know something and like That's you exactly. understand no, I get the it. person yeah. yeah it's a secret <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's a secret whether or not it's definable or not it doesn't matter it's like when you're a teenager and you run across someone else who smokes pot and you're like wow cool and you might not have any other interests at all but you guys can be friends at least for a little bit like that kind of thing yeah. Or even same thing with guitar players, right? That one dude might play reggae, one dude might play uh, play death metal, but because of the fact that they play the same six strings, there's something they can talk about. There's something they can bond over, right? Yeah. But like, I feel like the secret's a little bit, little bit less definable when it comes to our world. Um, the steel mace and the axe thing is one of those. It's more. It's so much more of an obsession. I feel like than a hobby. I mean, it's a hobby, sure. But like, I feel like people who are truly into either of these things are borderline obsessed with it. Yes. You should see my axe collection. It's absurd. I thought about sticking them all, all into this target behind me at a time. And like I got 90 to 100 different axes and dozens, if not more, throwing knives. I mean, I probably don't even have enough room up there to stick them all. Like that would be, it would have been fun just to walk up, stick them all, so you can see in the background this massive spider of weapons. I mean, why not, right? But, yeah, uh, like that's it. I mean, for me, this is an obsession. That's why I want it to be my 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 future. Like I want it to be my forever. Right. Because like, the funnest part for me is getting someone else. Like I love doing everything I do, but when I'm teaching someone else, and the first time they get that thunk, whether it's in the bulls there or not, it doesn't matter. First time they get a thunk and it sticks instead of falling to the ground or bouncing, the look on their face when they turn around is priceless. I yeah. mean, it's incredible. It's a satisfying yeah. feeling when, when you get it. Yes. And, and it's the same thing when you teach somebody a 360 with a steel mace. You know, you, they, they get a few bad swings, and you see they got the apprehension on their face. And then you see them do, like, this 
almost 99% perfect swing and their yeah. eyes open up and they look at you and go, oh, that was it. And it, they're yeah, just, exactly. they're just so like, they got that. Now they know. And they got that satisfied feeling like they hit the spot. Yeah. Like, uh, even yeah. like if, if anybody plays golf, it's the same thing. When you get a perfect swing and the ball just sings right off of the club and you just turn and look at everybody go, that was it. That was the shot. Now the rest of the game is all shit shots going to the woods, but that one shot always brings you back. That one shot's going to be what you remember for the rest of the day. and It's going to keep you moving. And that's right. funny that you mentioned golf. Cause when I'm teaching new people, like, like when I'm at my job, at the actual axe throwing venue, right? Like where I'm working for someone else, groups come in to pay and, you know, drink beer and throw axes and stuff. One thing that I teach people, I ask, well, one thing I ask people, sporting background do you have, right? Because, you know, if you, if you throw baseballs or footballs, I actually have to unteach you some stuff, right? I got to get some stuff out of your arm that you're going to do that's going to be wrong for this. But if someone says, oh, I play, I play soccer or I play golf, I'm, I'm dialed because a soccer player understands when they throw a ball, you're throwing using that you know like you're getting this form whatever you want to call this where you get that warrior pose almost and you're using your right your whole body you're not using your arm you're using your whole body to throw now the a golfer even though it's underneath like that understands again that same flow maybe a, a swinging a baseball bat is closer to throwing an axe than throwing a baseball so it's like Basically it depends on what their what, what their frame of reference is. But when someone says golf, I'm all, I always get all elated. I'm like, sweet, you're gonna get this super fast. And they're like, what? I'm like, you watch. And they do they all 100% of the time they get it faster than the rest of the group. And it's the people who have like, oh, I was a pitcher in baseball. Like, oh shit, this is gonna take forever. <laughs> like that, it's those people because they'll for, their form will never correct to what I want it to be. But they'll get to the point where they throw hard enough where they can get it to go, they'll get it to go against the grain, whatever. But that's not really what we're going for. Just like with steel mace, you don't force it. As with bad form, you can hurt yourself, right? So it's all about the way I. I mean, a lot of people have similar uh, similar uh, phrases, but the one I always use, and I'm sure I'm not sure if I coined this or not, is it's form before fury, right? Like. Yes. You can throw as hard as you want, but if you have bad form, it's just going to bounce hard. And the laws of physics apply. If you throw right. it harder, it's just going to – the wall's going to throw it harder back at you. Like you yes. see those videos of people throwing axes and they get hit with their own axe? It's because they throw it too hard. There's yeah. No, there's no reason for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I know what you're talking about. So uh, just referencing golf real quick, it, the harder you swing, like if you get pissed yeah. and swing hard, you're going to have a shit shot. If you relax and just follow yeah. form, the ball is just going to go. And, and then yeah. it's the same thing – with with the axe and and i i have used uh there's a place near me that it's a hatchet house you know they're they're all over yeah. the place now and oh yeah, they when, really are whenever i threw it hard trying to do the stupid thing it always came back at me and sometimes it almost right right to where i was standing and and then the guy who's walking around making sure nobody's doing that shit is looking at me yeah. going um do you want to get kicked out and i'm like sorry you know um but yeah a nice perfect form and the, the hatchet yeah, goes those, right like, into the wood slow down. <laughs> and then when you go over to yank it out of the wood it's in there it's like you're like holy crap man it's really deep and i didn't yeah. even throw it that hard yeah well it's one of those things is like it, i love telling people this too like you remember when you were in high school or any school school and math math was just one of those like oh well, once you start getting on the tree when you throw an ax and when you do a steel mace or when you swing a golf club, this is advanced mathematics in action. You don't think about it because it becomes intrinsic, right? But it does not mean that you're not doing advanced calculations in your subconscious brain. So when I explain that to people, like it, it, they, some of them start get, I get crickets from some people and some people like kind of light up like, really? No way. That's really cool. It, like to me, like it made me realize, and I know I did coin this term, that I am a what I call a nerd zerker. So I'm a berserker, but I'm a nerd because I'm all <laughs> super into math. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's dangerous. People who are into math and berserker mode are calculated berserkers. I mean, that's not supposed <laughs> yeah, to be. A berserker's not supposed to be calculated. So you're like a whole new level of berserker. That's fair. Like I said, it's a nerding on um, – oh, did we 
Did we uh, freeze up there? You froze up for a second there. Yeah, we froze. It's been happening on and off, but we're getting the message. Oh, no, we're through. good. Okay, I'll back that up again then. So what I was getting at is, like, that's where the nerd zerker comes from, right? So, uh, so uh, well, I have a couple different artist friends of mine. Like, I'm an artist too, but I'm intentionally trying to use other people to help me develop the art side of the brand, right? Right? Just so that way it doesn't become stagnant. It's not always looking the same, right? So look designs of stuff that we have on blackmetalaxe.com. You'll notice that there's like it, there, it's starting to fluctuate. There's new things popping up that look like different artists do it. And we got a new stuff coming up too. But I have three different artists of friends of mine. They're all doing nerd zerker, like whatever that means to them, right? And we're gonna say if we like them all, we might put them all out. Who the hell knows? I mean, that's kind of the idea. I mean, we work with artists, period. Like a lot of them are friends of ours, but we've had I got one guy straight up out of Poland. And another guy out of Ukraine sent me work that they just said, this works, this, this looks like it should be for you. So I bought it from them because it's great and it fits perfectly. And so one thing that we do out there, and if anyone listening is interested, is we partner with artists straight up. Like if you got something that we like, we'll put it on a t-shirt or stickers or whatever. And 50% of the money we make, you know, profit, obviously, like once the piece of art's paid for itself. So let's say we, so let's say we, we cost us $12 to make a shirt, we sell it for 20. That means that every four, $8 we make, we split 50 50 with you. Every shirt we sell, you're just, I don't know, we're going to send you four for the actual number, right? So, you know, crossing the streams. We want as many different people involved as possible. So. That, they all start out with me throwing axes, but this has actually turned into a business. <laughs> yeah, 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 and 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 that's that's a fantastic idea. I, I was even thinking of that myself because um, I do know some a few artists. I don't think I know as many as you, but um, I was like, hey, you know, th this is a thing that happens where or there's like a tattoo artist or something like that where they come up with a cool graphic because they're looking at your your brand. And then they have their own perception. And then what yeah. comes out of that is very fresh and, and inviting. So it's a great exactly. way to just – it's interactive with the artist who – it's always great to support art. And then it gives your prime audience something fresh to look at and a new vibe and a new feel to get behind. It's a really cool idea. I, I applaud you on that. You froze up. Uh-oh. Yeah, I'm sorry. I missed that last very thing, the last little bit you said there. I just said the last little bit. I applaud you on it for doing that because um, oh. you're helping you're helping the artists, which is a great yeah. way to support the community, and it gives your prime audience, your main audience, uh, the opportunity to have something fresh and new coming at them to get behind. Yeah, yeah. That's the old. That 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 is the primary motivation for that. But then also it comes from back in the day when I was a touring musician, like I didn't have a major label contract. We did what was called DIY, which meant even before the days of the internet being what it is and smartphones, we had to like book our own tour. When we went to Europe for three months, we had to do all that through email and phone calls and we'd go off on tour. So like for me, I've always been a self-supporting artist, right? Regardless of whether it's loud, obnoxious sounds or drawings or whatever, like it's all art, right? And so to me, that mindset is very important for me to keep in my daily life for everything. I mean, I, I'm involved in lots of art stuff too still. I mean, I, I do all kinds of ridiculous puppet shows and stuff like that with friends of mine. We're working on, we're working on a, a radio drama slash graphic novel that then we're also doing a documentary of the making of it but the documentary is all done with puppets so it's ridiculous like there's a puppet of me it's like that, that's insane i'm like i love it because these are the ideas that my friends have and they're like you're a huge part of all this so it's like i'm a huge part of these projects but there's someone else's idea and then when i bring them an idea they're all about it let's like let's do it so like i have this uh just in denver alone i got a, a it's it's a small crew of maybe a half a dozen of us who are fanatic obsessive full-time artists and then we have dozens of friends that are also artists that you know aren't quite as, as obsessed with it like they do it all the time but they don't like give things up in their life to finish drawing this picture type of stuff you know like, like the core group of us have made crazy sacrifices for our art and so we have a lot we have like an army of artists it's incredible and a lot of these people do everything from app development and digital to uh uh all kinds of shit, man. It's, 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 it's literally anything you can think of. Somebody's doing it in our group.
And uh, I'm getting another phone call real quick, so my video probably cut out. Yeah, I figured that, yeah. But um, that's cool. I'll call, I'll call her back in a minute. <laughs> you, you mentioned something that I, I, I think I've uh, hit upon before in another podcast, or it's just something I read. I, I can't – oh, I know what it was. I read the book uh, The War of Art. Did you ever read that, War of Art? Oh, I love that book. I okay. love that book. I think he's. I, I think he mentions. I, I, I do audio books, but I did it twice. Yeah, I think he mentions in that ahead, something about the, the the sacrifice of the artist, and that it's it's imperative to happen, like for for the artist to really be free. Um, that yeah. there has to be a sacrifice for your art, and it can be painful. It can be tough on you you can lose money you, you it, there's a lot of stress sometimes whatever whatever's involved with it but it's there's also on the other side of that something that happens to you um as part of your artistic journey is that something am i hitting that right i i, I can't remember if i if i read it like that or not uh yeah that's actually a dead on hey uh real quick uh can we can I, I gotta answer this she's blowing me up this is my wife uh can i get right back on this in a second uh, yeah, j jump off. I'm going to do a, 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 a quick hit for the sponsors. Go ahead. All right, cool. And then I'll, and then I'll jump right back on the same link? I think so. Yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> Let's try it out. No worries. All right, we'll see what happens. All right. All right, there he goes, everybody. That yeah, was Walden. So listen, guys. Uh, yeah, we got to talk about the sponsors real quick. Look, I found a new way to talk about the sponsors so that we don't soak up too much time because people are like, oh, it takes you like eight minutes to ten minutes to talk about all the sponsors. Bottom line is, if you want discounts from our sponsors, go to steelmacenation.com and sign up for the free newsletter. And when there's a new discount code that comes out for Adex Mason Clubs, for Mace Fit and Vintage Strength Training, Vintage Strength Games, you will get that notification. The, the, um, the, 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 the discount codes change due to fluctuations in the market and depending on what they want to provide as a sale or whatever. But I can tell you this, that Graziella Coffee Company is a sponsor. And if you use the discount code MACENATION15, you get 15% off on a bag of delicious coffee beans delivered right to your door. You grind them up, get a good grinder. It's not a lot of money. And you make yourself a delicious cup of coffee. And you sit back and you listen to the Steel Mace Nation podcast. And also, if that ain't enough caffeine for you, jump on board with Ongo Energy Spray, ongoenergy.com. They now have new flavors out, new bottles that are black. I didn't even get to try those yet. Um, but go check them out and use the discount code Steel Mace, Steel Mace, uh, Steel Mace 25. No, Steel Mace Nation 25. And um, you get 25% off, and it is uh, spray. So you spray three pumps in your mouth, and you get 75 milligrams of caffeine. I think the newer product that they have out is a little stronger. But let me tell you something. It's not a lot of caffeine compared to a pre-workout. Pre-workouts are like 350 milligrams, and they wig you out, man, and your heart is like palpitating everything. 75 milligrams is the sweet spot with Ongo because it gets into your system much faster because it's a spray. Oh, here's, here's Walden, and that's our podcast sponsors, everybody. Um, what did I just do? There he is. Come on, Walden. Jump in there, man. Jump in there. Uh, yeah, go to the steelmatestation.com, sign up for the newsletter, and the newsletter will um, come out you know, regularly, and if there's any discount codes, you'll get them. Add X Mesa Clubs, Mace Fit, and Vintage Strength Training. What's up, dude? Had that phone call. What's go. up? Hey, I went and grabbed my steel mace real quick. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cool yeah. steel mace, man. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, dude. I do I actually do some flow with this. You know, I got my 360s on and stuff. But it is sharp. But I figured, hey, you know, I had the opportunity real quick. Yeah, no emergencies. She just forgot that we were doing this. It's all good. So that's always nice. All right. That's I'm right loving back there. I'm loving this podcast, man. If anybody's listening on audio right now, make sure – just try to watch it on YouTube and watch the video because he's got two cool dogs. He's sitting on a friggin' uh, tree stump. He's building an axe, and he's probably going to start showing us some cool stuff right here. This oh, is I, I plan on the end. I'm going I'm to show you some stuff. I mean, why? I mean, I have to, right? <laughs> I think so, man. I think so. That's, 
That's fair. That's fair. But that's, that's the best way to advertise for myself too, not just sitting in front of the target, but come on. <laughs> right. Yeah. And you know, I mean, like if everybody goes to to your Instagram, they'll see you doing all kinds of stuff, but um, this is a great opportunity to see, uh, in, you know, how how straight up good you are because like you're putting yourself not not on the spot i think you're comfortable with this but oh you know. yeah i mean i if i miss something pff, whatever who cares <laughs> so that, right. like, like that's the thing i will admit and, and anyone who doesn't admit this is uh, straight up lying uh but uh when you see one of my videos online and it's me nailing it it sometimes it is the first try but there's usually a handful if not dozens of handfuls of failure so i have no problem admitting i'm a human being and if i try to do something fun for you and i mess it up i'm just gonna try it again yeah and if i mess it up like three times in a row screw it we'll do something different <laughs> <laughs> there you go right forget about what i'm a human being a just like everybody who's watching this man like like we all have our specialties but if any of us are perfect man we gotta go do something else <laughs> tell us about the axe you got there this is Right here specifically, this is a, a double bit. It's called a uh, – it's just a basic Collins, actually. I got it at Ace Hardware. It's called a – it's a Michigan pattern double bit axe. This is something you don't actually use in the World Axe Throwing League. They want single bit, right? So, like, that side off and that kind of stuff. Um, I got all kinds of fancy stuff for that. This is just one of my current new favorites because I've gotten into the double bit thing because the European guys – they throw the double bit axes and they do it from farther away. And that and they got a tiny little two inch bull well, one point nine seven inch bullseye. And uh the World Axe Throwing League's got a three and a half inch bullseye, which is like that's fine. But like I'm throwing from twenty feet away, so twice as far away almost at a, a bullseye that's half the size almost with a bigger axe. That sounds awesome. And uh that end, like, you know, you look into the Swedish Axe Throwing Society and, like, you know, the World Championships for 2020 or next year, 2021, up in Nova Scotia. Now, this Angry Wood Axe thing I told you about earlier is uh, that I'm going to this weekend is a $25,000 prize pool, right? And the World Championships in Atlanta later this year are uh, is a $50,000 prize pool. But for the double bit alone, it's a single event, there's a $75,000 prize pool. So I have got a new interest, obviously, and not just playing around with these, but I'm going to take, start taking these a little more serious because, like, that's a world I might be able to pay my bills in. Hell yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and it's seventy five grand just for the double bit. Yeah, it's just the only, they don't have hatchets in the Swedish. It's just double bit axe throwing. That's it. They don't, that's, the only, that's the only event. Oh man! I mean, it's not a seventy-five thousand dollars first prize. It's the whole pool. But well, I okay. imagine the top prize is at least thirty. Yeah, which is crazy. I mean, right, that's bananas. And like, you win one of them. I mean, that's world champion. And there's some crazy good dudes in this game. Like, but I, I, like I said, you know, maybe it's the 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 ref the you know relevance to the whole steel mace and the whole i don't know the whole i always feel like it's a, when i'm throwing a big axe or doing steel mace it's the same feel but i always feel like it's a it's the mechanics of a the french catapult with the with rope on it and then with cars like across a football field and like on mythbusters and whatnot like i feel like that those are the mechanics and i'm I'm not a scientist, so they probably are, but I'm not 100% on that. Um, but I feel like those are the mechanics behind it all. And with a, a little one-pound or two-pound hatchet, you can't feel those same mechanics, you know? Like, you can't get that whipping feeling. You can't feel that weight all the way at the end of the axe. It's, it's a different skill. And, uh, like, I don't know, man. I just love – I like the beastly, just mass of these things. Are you crazy. throwing it one-handed when you do this, or is it two-handed? I do both. I mean, it depends. With the bit, double bits, I typically do two-handed, but that's only because that's what pretty much everybody does in those leagues. And, like, I just kind of want to – also, it's another – it's a reason to keep balanced. You know, you throw with both hands and you're staying – keeping balance and stuff. But when I throw my single bit, which is just as big, which is knock, knock one of those off for the World Axe Throwers, I throw that with one hand. Like, I, I generally compete with one hand. I just find it easier to aim myself. But with the big axe, I decided with, the, with the, these guys, I decided at least with, for competition, I'd at least try it their way, right? And I find myself having pretty good luck with it. But when I do, like, tricks and stuff with this guy, it's all one-handed, you know? 
I've had to rehandle this thing twice in the last two months. And what is <laughs> what is that way? This is probably three and three quarters pounds after all the weight I've shaved off of it. Okay, so um, three and three quarter pounds, and then I mean, you're if you're going to throw it with one hand, are you holding it yeah. all the way at the bottom of the handle? Yeah, about like, probably about, uh, you find a balance point, right? Okay. And for me, yeah. it's probably here ish, right? And that's what I got it, what, six inches below there. I could shorten the handle if I wanted, but I'd probably move my balance point up. But also, my one handed throw there, right? You see that? Yeah. I got my one handed throw. If I wanted to do two hand, I'd just add that second hand right underneath. Okay. That way, my mechanics don't change. You know what I'm yes, saying? Yes, right, right. But so uh, this is a 32 inch handle currently. And uh, with a four and a half pound weight at the end of it. Oh, no, I'm sorry, three and a half pound weight. At uh, the end yeah, of it, so. so that's that's very close to your your typical Chinese made steel mace, like the, the yeah. those typical, but the 33 inch handle with yeah. a 10 pound weight. But the, you know, if they go down to seven pounds, the handle's shorter. But so anybody yeah. who swings a mace who understands that, think about what he's doing with yeah. this uh, four pound axe and he's holding it at, at the end of a 32 inch handle and he's throwing it one handed and he's hitting a target um you know think about what your shoulder's doing your elbow is doing and the mechanics involved think about yeah. how how that translates over to like what a, a steel mace swing looks like and how it feels on the shoulders so this isn't not this is not like an easy feat for somebody to do if they never picked up an axe before it's gonna all oh, that no. weight that's four pounds on the end of a 32-inch handle, so we're talking about leverage here. We're talking about it's actually heavier because it's the longer you make the handle, the more. Low. Yeah, and there's going to be – so it's, that's really cool, man. This is interesting. This, like I said, this is the nerd zerker side of things. Again, it's one of those like, oh, yeah. I mean, scientifically, you know, you hold it out to the end of your body. It becomes even heavier than it is here. Right. You know, like, like 10 pounds here, theoretically 10 pounds holding a 10-pound – on your abdomen's ten pounds, but holding it all the way out, it's what's a hundred? I think they say. Yeah, like I, think, I, I think you multiply it uh, by every inch, right? So, yeah, that's what I think. So, I, seriously, like that four pounds all the way out there at this point, that's what I mean. That's a work on that little delt right there on yeah. your shoulder on rotator cuff, and so it really is like with with the hatchets, like you said. You know, you you were there. You can you can just wing at those things. You can freaking throw them as hard as you want yeah and you're not gonna i mean you're gonna feel it in the morning most likely but you're not gonna most likely you're not gonna tear a rotator cuff <laughs> right. but if you don't got your form down with one of these you're gonna jack yourself up yeah and you might do it permanently you could really hurt yourself right and let I me mean, granted there's also edges on this thing but there's that but like i'm not even we're not even getting to that <laughs> <laughs> yeah right that's, that's, it's kind of obvious. There's edges on the damn thing. Be, yeah. be careful. <laughs> yeah, it looks like you got them really uh, – the edges are, like, really – what's the right word? Beveled? I mean, you got a lot of yes. clean edge on there. Yeah, Which, there's a, if you, I don't know if you can see right there, but yeah, you see that profile? Yeah. Like it, it's been knocked down even a little bit more because this, this is, like, the original side. I just kind of – I even take a file to that side, right, so that way I can't accidentally cut myself on it. Okay. This side's sharp. This side's real sharp. You can see it's been, you know, beveled and stuff like that. But the idea is, you know, when you come, when you compete, you want run rotation and stick, right? But theoretically, you can get one and a half and stick like that. But that's that's an illegal throw. So you want to be able to make sure. Well, also, I do a lot of stuff where I'm spinning it this way and then in the air and catching it and throwing it behind me and stuff, right, without looking. So when I do that kind of stuff. It doesn't matter to me which edge sticks, but I can kind of learn by the different shaving patterns here. You can see the blade way more on that side than this side. I can see in the video, and when I go back and look at the target, kind of what happened, right? Because you don't have two mirrored edges. You have two different different corners. So you can judge what the mechanics of what you just did really was, right? So I got one video with this. I think it was a reel, actually, that I did on um, Instagram where I'm like walking away from the target, I flip it in the air and does like a, it does a, a, like a 900 degree spin and a flip. And then I catch it and then do a full windmill and throw it behind me. Like I didn't look at the anything the whole time other than the handle to make sure I was gonna grab the right part. But then and like watching the video back, I can see by, because of the different edges, I can see how many times it spun, right? Instead of just kind of having to guess while it's counting. So I can actually count the actual rotations and I can really start to learn. Cause uh, just like, you know, team sports, competitive sports. Um, like watching the playbacks important. 
you know comedians listen yes. back to their to their sets to their sets so they can hear what what how things uh, flowed and stuff like that if you don't right. videotape yourself you're not really going to be able to make progress other than just feeling it you know yeah. if you have a coach it's one thing but if you are your coach you, you need that video camera yeah it gives you um a objective view i mean yeah they really can't figure out what you're doing wrong put it on slow-mo and watch it yeah you'll, that, it'll show you every single minute detail of everything you did i did slow mos i love it slow-mo instant replay is something i go to like i've yeah. done a couple handstand tricks now that i'm not going to talk about because they're in my back pocket but i've done a couple of those that i wasn't even sure they're possible right and i was like spending an hour out here messing around trying to figure the geometry out and after like i don't know a couple dozen attempts it's like all right get the camera out <laughs> what are these axes doing in the air i can't tell because i'm upside down right <laughs> like <laughs> Like, okay, let's watch this. And I figured out, like, oh, I'm so close. I just got to scoot to here. I got to try this. I'm going to move my distance. I scooted my distance six inches closer to the target. Next thing you know, I nailed something I thought was impossible. First wow. try. And, like, it's one of those, like, I don't know how repeatable it is. I mean, I'm sure it's repeatable. I did it once, right? But it's, but it's one of those, like, a regular, at this point, doing a regular, normal handstand shot, I can pretty much stick at least 50% of the time, if not every time. But the one I'm telling you about, like, it's one out of 100 right now, literally. Wow. So. <laughs> yeah. So you got you to gotta make that better. Watch a lot, a lot of slow motion. And, and yeah. It, yeah. How, yeah, you definitely are a nerd zerker with this. It's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're watching slow motion video, you're nerding out, man. And that's great. Oh, I love that. So listen. Absolutely. We're, we're, you know, about an hour in. Um, can yeah. you show us a, a couple of things and before we, uh, yeah. we click off? Let's do that. Let me hear. Let me uh, let me set you. Let me go grab a couple things real quick. Uh, I'm gonna do some stuff with the big axe. Couple things with hatchets, and I'm gonna scoot my camera a little bit so All we right. get a little bit. We get a little bit better of a view. Um, right. I obviously I got some camera angles I like. <laughs> like if you've seen my uh, my 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 wall in the videos, some of those are you know I got some angles I use a lot. Part of that's because we got this awesome new uh, mural up on the on the uh, garage that one of our friends did for us and uh we used to have a boring garage and i realized hey if people watch this stuff for uh let's see here all right so yeah that's that's the mural right there it used to be a boring garage and now we yeah. got color in the background and then here nice. we go this is my this is my my buddy this is one of my knife throwing targets it's about person dimensions and uh so right now there's an axe thrown in it so i can just stick my camera on it because i got a magnet on there all right so let's get ourselves at least a little bit of target on there if, so maybe if we'll we to... were uh in the viking society of those times right now we know what your job would be on the battlefield <laughs> we, right we know, we know what you do man you're this is awesome this is what i do so some things that i do that people actually ask about a lot is just simple stuff like this right learn that rotation right but then you go forward like that instead, and you got like I don't know if, like like if that's translating. But throwing it this way versus throwing it that way, total different geometry, right? Because right. you go in here, you get to throw that throw that weight up. But when you go this way, you're kicking the handle around. It's much closer to a kick flip, right? right? Simple things like that. Then you can also, you know, balance it on your finger like this. Start getting a little spin action going, right? Now. Also, get the, get that hammer on there. You can also do stuff like this. You know, like it's it's those are all the basics. When you're sitting around doing nothing, those are the kind of things that apply with a hatchet, at least, to what we're talking about. Right? Can you explain so, why? Can you explain why this this handwork is so important as part of your practice? Yeah, absolutely. Because this what this is here. This is all stuff that I uh, end up. It just helps you. It helps you realize what the balance of this thing in your hand actually is, right? You're becoming when you intimate become, with it. Yeah. It's like when I played guitar, I can start playing guitar eventually without looking. Same difference, you know? You want to become, you want this to be an extension of your hand, regardless of what that extension might be. So, and you know, every once in a while you drop something like that. So I got the red one out now because I just dropped one because I wasn't looking, but that's part of it. Yeah, and it's anybody a, using a steel mace, this is the same thing. You know, switching from right. hand to hand and doing all the stuff. This is ah. this is how you you make it an extension of your body by doing this handwork. Yeah, exactly. So I just you know 
some people refer to this as like more of like a kendama trick or something like that even like you know that weird juggly stuff but i'm always doing this stuff right because if i can if i know how this thing's gonna flow like this like you know then i know how it's gonna do it when it goes like that like i know like that oh we got oh well, we're gonna do this i got a neighbor doing some stuff we're gonna take you with me so keep you close but like Right here, this is a called a short rotation, right? I'm touching the axe to the target, right? Generally, that's, oh, hey, that didn't work, but that's cool. But generally, you got to manipulate your uh, your geometry a little bit. So right here, you look down here, those flagstones, the, the edge of that's 12 feet. And 12 feet is the foul line for the World Axe Throwing League, right? So theoretically, I'm going to grab this one instead. This is a neat little carved up myself. So you can see that fancy ass handle it's all broken and stuff because yeah. i throw it way too much but the idea here is you could just go like that and then you know it's gonna hit because it's 12 you're, you're basically 12 feet off right yeah yeah so same idea yeah my neighbors just turned on a freaking uh power sprayer or something but whatever um as long as you can hear me we're good right yeah we're, but we're, uh sound is good okay cool so then theoretically, I should be able to do the same thing without looking, like, like look right at you and then throw. I didn't, but that's cool. I could hear that I didn't. I would have thrown it right the over. Thing. the. I would have thrown it right over, so. Well, that's the thing is I can basically hit the thing I'm going for, right? I don't know. Did that stick? Yeah, kind of. But <laughs> stuck between some logs. But the idea is it's all geometry, right? Right. So while I'm warming up here and embarrassing myself a little bit, which is fine, I'm going to try to – do one of my little handstand guys for you which is going to be fun because i'm going to be parked right about here when i do it this will be a this is a uh, an angle specifically for you <laughs> awesome so see how well i can get this on my first try barely warmed up for the day so all right here we go oh hit the target but i didn't stick that one i'll do one more oh no we'll do it we'll, we'll go up to three tries hit the target again I mean, i'm hitting what i'm going for but let's see here one more there we go oh i hit a loose part uh, and fell it, out it was stuck though yeah it, yeah it came out yeah well you can that's, see that this thing's very frayed that's now, I want, now i just want to get it there we go ah uh, yeah there you go awesome dude. yeah can sorry that took me four whole tries but yeah yeah, it was there even it close is. to the bullseye even, so. Awesome, man. But that's the yeah. thing, man. You got you to gotta know what you do, know what you do wrong, so that way you can correct for it, right? Right. Like, like I knew what I did wrong those first three times. Hopefully, that's the reason I nailed it the fourth time. But, but it's the perseverance. You, you, if you screw it up three times and you say to yourself, ah, screw it, I'm not going to get it, then you're not going to get it. Right. Like, I mean... Some, some of these things take forever, literally yeah. forever to nail. Um, ironically, the first time I ever did a, a, a handstand shot, it was just kind of like, oh, I'm going to try this. I got it on a second try, which was one of those like, okay, this is a whole new world now. And then, you know, it wasn't as easy as I was hoping it was going to be. I noticed but, that when you do your handstand, you, you yeah. have your hand on the axe and the axe yeah. goes onto the ground as an extension yeah. of your hand, you do a handstand. So at that point, you have to shift your weight over to your actual free hand. So you yeah, can it's almost like the X. It's almost like doing a handstand. Cause you go here, right? And you push up and it's more like a cartwheel at that point. Cause you twist and then yeah. you throw. Hey, look at that. I just hit it upside down first try. Yeah, like I said, I'm warming up now. <laughs> Yeah, that's but, uh, that's really cool. I, again, if anybody's listening on audio, you've got to switch over and listen and watch this on YouTube. He's doing a handstand with his axe, and then he's freeing up the axe off the ground so he could throw it back at the target while he's basically upside down. And, I mean, I, people, some people can't even do a regular handstand, and you're doing one where one hand is, is using an axe. So that's that's pretty cool. Yep. Well, I mean, I got to give my lady credit for all that straight up. Uh, um, she's a, a a nutrition coach and a pole dancing instructor, and she's always telling me, you know, balance the dork side. Get, you know, get your hands in the dirt. All right, I'm going to try something while I'm not looking here. Bam. Got this guy. All right? I got the target behind me, and I'm going to be looking at you. 
see what happens here. All right, there's my, there we go. Ah, I don't even know what it did. I don't even know what it did, but that's the whole point. Like, I'm trying stuff here. But Why you know, not, right? Dude, you're, you're putting yourself out there. I mean, I, you're looking at a phone backwards. And oh, hey, look at that. The fact that it that even time hit. It worked. There it is. Yeah, it worked that time. The fact that's that the thing, you man. hit it the first time was amazing. Yeah, this, these big old behemoths like this end up uh, sticking real deep. Sorry, I'm going to lean over at my target moves. Try this one more time. Okay, okay, yeah, it's twice oh. in a row. There you go. Yeah. It's like a matter of warm. Like I said, it's just a matter of warming up. Yeah. And if uh, if you're afraid to show your audience the warm up, well, then you're never gonna be able to perform live. That's for sure. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And it, there you go. You know, uh, that that's another lesson that we could share with people that don't yeah. be afraid to put yourself out there. Um, you know, don't be worried about like, oh, I'm gonna get embarrassed myself. No, man. Be you. Do your thing. If that's your thing, do it. Just do it, and and people will appreciate yeah. you. And and I think people uh, appreciate the openness. You know, I think that's yeah. an important thing. Because then that we well, know then, now that that you have to work hard at it too. So whatever I want to do, I have to work hard at. It's it can be yeah. inspirational. And anyone who's out there, anybody out there at all, that's interested and has any questions about any of this, I, I am available you can find me through black metal axe on instagram yeah, i mean i have blackmetalaxe.com which i would prefer people go there then you can you can actually email me personally directly and uh, i will get back to those are my priority obviously um it's just the letter w at blackmetalaxe.com is my main email and I, those are the ones i take priority with then instagram then facebook and uh i technically have a a, a twitter account they're all under Black Metal Axe or Black Metal Axe LLC. You'll find somewhere. But I'm always, always about helping everybody. If people have questions that are relevant to this, I am more than willing to help. If people want some sort of, you know, lesson, I do online lessons. We can do video chat like this and I can walk you through stuff if you have a target or not. Um, also, anyone in Denver, anyone in Colorado, really at all, like I do, I'll do one on ones. I'll do, you know, I'll come to you as well. I have portable targets I'll bring. I mean, that's the whole thing. I'm all about, taking this farther, like I said, from just darts with axes to more of a tactical sport. Because one of the arguments that I make, and a lot of ax throwers get upset about this until like, they let me finish talking, is uh, that this isn't a sport yet, this is a game. And the reason I say that is, it's not that there's not points, nothing on the line, but if there's no, there's no foreseeable consequences, like you can get hit wrong and get your neck broke and you're dead, like, or like you go up to dunk a basketball, come down and shatter your ankle because someone fouled you. It's not a contact sport. So it's not, to me, it's a game still. And it's not that I want to take it to the point where you can, we're, we're doing things where you might injure someone else. That's not at all what I mean. I'm just saying, I don't feel like this is a sport like football and baseball and basketball are yet because there's no foreseeable consequences. Uh, basically say, meaning that, if you're going to throw an axe at something, like, you know, hey, that was, a, that was neat. A little bullseye. Woohoo. Boom. But if you're going to throw an axe at something, like, you need to know that, it, that, that intrinsically, if this was warfare a thousand years ago, that something's a someone or, a, or a something that can come hurt you. So it's about having that mindset. So I don't know. Maybe you've seen there's, a, there's an Instagram uh, live we did about an hour long, a couple, couple, uh, weeks ago with scott line backyard viking and that was the you know that was our battle our nemesis thing we have a new game that we started coming up with this is it here this is the saga scoring system and what it is it's a game based off of competitive throwing right you can steal points you can outdo people you can there's there's it's, it turns the game into more of a strategy game right and so just by having a strategy in your mind where you're like oh if i hit the bullseye every time i could still lose like terribly, not just a little bit. But that's the whole thing. Is it's like this isn't just a hit of bullseye who's the most accurate all the time game anymore. So by adding some sort of mental consequence to it, we uh, like I'm hoping that this becomes something in the future that uh, we end up being able to, you know, turn into another pro league or something like that. Or even, well, screw it, who cares? I mean, it could just be something people do for fun. We don't care. The whole point of it is we just want to expand axe throwing. So that way it has, it becomes, I don't know, more respected. 
we don't want to be just on at midnight on ESPN once a year anymore. We want to actually have our own, you know, something that people look forward to. Have Why can't it be on the Olympics? For. The Olympics. Dude, oh, God, don't get me if, started on if that. If you could yeah, do that's curling, happen if you could eventually. do curling, then you could do axe throwing. That is exactly my point. Like, like I, I don't even have to get to it. Here's a fun one for you. You're going to hold it this way. We call that one the gunslinger, right? Because you're holding it off the hammer and you're going to. So if, if when I throw a real quick demonstration, I'm throwing this normal hammer grip, right? When I throw over there, that's a one rotation throw. Once and over, stuck sticks in the target. When I hold it this way, it's going to do one and a half rotations from the same spot. So it goes like that. Oh, I actually over rotated and hit the bottom of the thing. Let me try that here. It's a problem with locks. Catch the bottom of that empty spot right there. And I don't think it's stick like a little target yeah. wall does. It helps with accuracy. But yeah, there we go. So I don't know if you can see what happened there. But because I flicked it off my hand, I got that one and a half rotation and then, then the stick otherwise. And it's from the same place. Right. So that's where, more of that nerd Zerker stuff where it's like playing with geometry. Whoopee. <laughs> But yeah, you know, whatever. <laughs> I just I just sit around here goofing off all day. Well, that's not true. But I definitely give myself some time all day, well, every day to goof off a little. Because, you know, I got tournaments coming up. I actually have to practice. Like, I don't want to show up and just be all, you know, dialed in for trick shots and then, you know, get dominated in my actual competition. I would like to win all four of these things. So if I can win the hatchet competition, the big axe, the doubles, and the trick shots, I'll come home with some money. Yeah, uh, but uh, I don't expect it's, to. But I'd like to I, at least be a competitor. <laughs> I, I hope I hope you do win, and uh, I think uh, you know I'm definitely gonna try to follow this as it goes. So before we go, just tell everybody um, how they could follow your competitions that you're going to be like. What's the what's the best way to stay in touch? I, I guess it's on your Instagram, right? And and your well, Instagram's definitely the easiest place to find me. I got a couple thousand followers. There, a couple hundred posts and honestly like i i do my best to interact with every single person who interacts with me like okay. if it's some spam bot sending me some bullshit like you know what i'm saying like i'm not gonna interact with that right but if somebody you know sends me a message or even just comments like oh man what kind of acts are you using or how did you do that like i'll at least interact with them yeah, if yeah it's a yeah. bunch of emojis i'll do the same thing you know what i'm saying and even with yeah. the even with the hater there's not I get a lot of those because, you know, I still like their comments. I mean, you got one person talking some sort of smack on you, and uh, usually a few other uh, people come. I don't usually got to say nothing. A lot of, well, everybody else will say it for me. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, whatever. It's All right, thing. so, like, you yeah, know, so now you're, you're, you're going to be doing these competitions coming up with, uh, so people could go on your Instagram. They can, yeah, they I'm going uh, to try to do and you're uh, gonna be on live. Okay, you're going to be I'm on TV. You're going to be on ESPN? Uh, no, no, no. That is in uh, that's that is in uh, December for the World's Open. Okay. And, uh, and, uh, it, that's when that'll be. Uh, but that'll you'll be, be on Atlanta, that. Georgia. But yeah. you'll be on that. Yeah, sure, well, as long as I do good enough to make it to the, you know, the, the final I'm bracket. Sure, yeah. I'm sure you will. I'm, I'm pulling for My you, My plan is to be on it. Yes. So, yeah, <laughs> everybody, you know, like, it, obviously he's got competitions that lead up to that, but December's the big one, and you can watch it on ESPN. Yep. Get your buffalo wings out, get your beers out, and be like, yo, yeah. there, there goes Walden. He's throwing axes. Walden, Walt I Rack, Black metal axe. <laughs> Black Metal X, that's right. Yeah, guys, uh, this yep. was a very entertaining podcast. I had a lot of fun just watching right you on. throw axes. Uh, you're a really yeah. cool dude, and, and I, yeah, you I as think well, man, this has been great. Yeah, man. We'll, well, maybe we'll catch up and we'll do another podcast after December. Uh, you know, we'll talk about your competition and everything like that. I would love to, but just so everybody knows, I'm uh, coming up here. Uh, I don't know if this will be out by then or not, but uh, second weekend of October, I will be in Tulsa, Oklahoma at the Angry Wood Open. And there'll be lots of – that's a legit competition. So I'll be doing some – I'll be doing posts from there as well as probably some live video. So feel free to get on me on Instagram or Facebook. Uh, Facebook, it's Walt Thrax Black Metal Axe or Black Metal Axe LLC for the business page. And then ultimately, like, go check out blackmetalaxe.com. And the, my, the final thing I'd like to plug is I have a YouTube channel that's, that's definitely taking its time growing because I put long-form videos of, like, you know – full a trick attempts or like you know seven minute video of a bunch of nonsense but it's all throwing related and it's all trick shots mostly and it's like you know it's 
it is what I do. And, uh, you know, like the more subscribers we get on there, as you know, the better. So, yeah. you know, you can go, uh, we don't have a short link yet because you need to have a, a hundred subscribers to get the short link. Yeah. So it's just, just find black metal acts on YouTube. Give us a like and a subscribe. I, I would very much appreciate it. All right. And then, uh, like I said, to hit me. At, yeah. Hit me up in comments. Send me personal messages. Send me personal emails. I don't care. Okay, let's, All right, let's man. Do it. Yeah, I'll be one of those people subscribing and uh, make sure uh, anybody out there who's listening, yes, yeah, subscribe to his YouTube channel. Make sure you also subscribe to the Steel Mace Nation YouTube channel while you're at it. Oh, man. And, it's very um, entertaining. I got to say, like, at first I was like, you know, a Steel Mace Nation. Okay, this sounds cool, but like, okay, we'll see. But it's just like access. Like when someone who's not in it goes in, like, how entertaining can it be? Like, oh, do you have no idea? Yeah, <laughs> this is yeah. awesome. Dude. Yeah, yeah, I've actually dove in and watched a lot of your episodes at this point. <laughs> oh, man, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I think I, I think that's great. And um, hey, man, I'm going to support, support the family, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I'll be in touch with you soon, man. And um, good luck with everything. So everybody, that was Walden, Black Metal Axe. There he goes, riding off uh, into the sunset. <laughs> Perfect shot. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> All right, right man. One more blind shot for you real quick. Do it's it. With the big guy. We're going to finish the camera. on this. All right, let's finish on this. Hopefully it's a good one. Oh, just, oh. just short. <laughs> ah, whatever. It happens. Who cares? <laughs> and I... <laughs> It doesn't matter at all. In fact, yeah, I'm just going to walk off into the sunset this time and do it one more time. Ah, I actually chopped one of those a huge chunk of that one off. That's the thing about the big axe. You hit the corner of the, the log, and it might have stuck if it was a hatchet, but they chopped that completely off. Right, so, right. Yeah, I consider that a quality shot right there. I mean, because if you were in war, that, that your, oh. your foe would have fallen. Oh. I would have hit myself in the face. Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a gnarly shot. And then back right. at the Viking hole, everybody would be drinking mead going, yo, Walden, man, that was a great shot in that guy's head. That was picture perfect. <laughs> <laughs> hey, anyone out there who's, who makes movies that wants axe tricks, let me know. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I'm I'll sure there's a call for Or even be in the damn thing for you if you need it. <laughs> All, right. All right, bro. Thanks a All lot. Right. Appreciate it. I'll, we'll right. talk to you soon. You, you broke up. Say it again. Say it again. Wait. I said absolutely, my friend. Thank okay. you very, very much. This You're welcome. Fantastic. Thank you. Let's do it again. All right. Enjoy the rest of your day, man. <laughs> Talk to you later.